Pete Holmes in Batman. Ah, the Batman saga. It all started when Pete Holmes and Matt McCarthy starred in a college humor sketch spoofing a specific moment from The Dark Knight. Harvey Dent. Can he be trusted? Well, he seems to be about the best that we've been. What was that? What are you sneaking away? No. Is this your little vanishing routine? What? Is this the part where I turn and then I turn back and all of a sudden you're gone? No. Everybody's impressed. Harvey Dent. Can he be trusted? Well, he seems to be about the. Seems to be about the best that we've got. Harvey Dent. The idea was pretty simple. Recreate the dead, serious aesthetics of the Nolan film, and then throw a splash of cold water on the proceedings as Batman struggles to keep up appearances. Uh, Batman? I found something. Oh, you, you found some? I found some. You found some something? Evidence. You found some evidence. I found evidence. You found some evidence over there. Here. Okay. Someone left some evidence. We would have never found that evidence without you. The sketch was such a hit that College Humor expanded it into a whole series called Batman, spoofing other scenes from the Nolan trilogy and even doing scenes with characters not found in the trilogy that nevertheless recreate its aesthetics. Riddle me this, Batman. Riddle, no. If you aim to give us a shot, we'll riddle you. What are we? It's always risky when you expand a one-off sketch into a recurring feature, and you'd think this concept would get old before too long. You would think. You wanted me. Here I am. I didn't want you. I don't even know who you are. Where's Dent? I don't know who Dent is. I think you broke my balloon tying hand. You're garbage. Who kills for money? No, I'm Wiggles. Garbage is a different clown that works the East End of- God, no! Like, the central joke just boils down to Batman is bad at being Batman, and yet it just keeps working. So you thought that we could be decent. Harvey, thank God you're here. Two-Face took Gordon's boy hostage. Two-Face, you're back. What are you talking about? Every installment features Holmes as Batman, McCarthy as Batman's foil, usually Commissioner Gordon, but occasionally he plays other characters as well, and sometimes Allison Becker shows up, and occasionally there are even other guest stars. Come on, man, I got kids to feed! Oh, they don't like falafel? I you guys thought a bad idea. Thank you, that solves most of my problems. <laughs> your stupid rule will be your downfall. You know that, right, Batman? Wow! If I had a nickel for every time- Someone showed up on Batman and ended up showing up in the Eternals, too. I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? The series commits to the baseline formula of taking a scene either directly from the Nolan trilogy or heavily evocative of it, and everything is all serious until Batman says or does something ridiculous, and McCarthy and the other foils react incredulously. The hero can be anyone, even a man doing something as simple as putting a coat on a young boy's shoulder. Or may not have been that boy. Oh, really? A boy who I don't know. Maybe had just had his parents murdered. Right. Making me. Oh my God, you're Bruce Wayne. You know, there's a bomb that's gonna go off. But despite such a clear and strong formula, they managed to keep it fresh by changing up the types of ridiculous Batman is. Sometimes he's still figuring out his image. Where are the other drugs going? Why, why are you talking like that? It's a bad voice. It's a bat. Really kind of goes against the whole dark no, no, Batman no. thing. Are you kidding me? I worked on that like all day. It was like bat, sonar, high, squeaky. It's not scary, it's silly. Sometimes he's incredibly distracted. Talia, Al Ghul, here to finish my father's work. But we totally had sex. Yes, I, I know. No, like hardcore, three times. It was all a cruel ploy. To gain your confidence. That was a cruel ploy. <laughs> Sign me up for another. Sometimes his reactions are just inexplicable to his foes. You, 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 you jump off of buildings and you fight criminals and you're scared of Roombas? How does it know where to go if we don't push it? Wow. And sometimes 
He's just completely clueless. It takes a little more than wearing a hat and or glasses to fool people. Really? Check this out, watch. Uh-oh, I'm someone else, are you fooled? I'm not Commissioner Gordon, he's gone. Who are you? Where's Commissioner Gordon? Oh, you're back. Commissioner, there was someone else. Despite being a very specific parody of a very specific Batman iteration, Holmes's version of Batman feels distinct. There were hundreds of Dark Knight parodies at the height of the trilogy's success, but this one stood out amongst the others. One last question. What? How did he die? Oh, f my face. Can we trust him? No, we can't trust him because he's Two-Face and he's dead and you killed him and Bane told him just leave! Fine. Holmes is barely exaggerating Christian Bale's Batman voice at all, but it feels like a fully distinct character. The breathiness present in Bale's performance gets recontextualized to an overwhelming confusion at the world around him. Full disclosure, it's kind of been a crazy day, and uh, this shit's really hot. I kind of go in and out. This is the guy that beat the Joker. Yeah, I don't know how he did it. And unlike other Batman comedies, which might go bright and colorful and comic book-like with their aesthetic, here the commitment to the Nolan aesthetic down to every last visual detail really makes the absurdity pop. Hi, Rachel, Commissioner Gordon. I was just water skiing from a hovercraft, you know, doing reckless billionaire type stuff like I do. Still have your eye makeup on. <laughs> no. This, I was, I was a hit in the face. These are black eyes. I've been fighting crime, no, not that. While other Batman parodies often poke fun at the absurdity of Batman by exaggerating the silly aspects intrinsic to the concept of Batman, this generates its own absurdity by exaggerating the self-serious aspects of Nolan's take and then bringing in its own silliness for a wonderful juxtaposition. Stay away, Christopher McDonald. Hey, Batman, how you doing? Oh my god, are you kidding me? Goose McKenzie, you keep your distance. Goose McKenzie, that going way back. You know, most people know me as Shooter McGavin, but uh, thanks for knowing my work. I think that's part of what sets it apart from so many other Batman parodies. It's not just doing the normal Batman jokes we all do, it's completely unexpected jokes that just happen to be applied to Batman. Batman, you have to know what, de I mean, your parents were shot and killed. My parents were shot, yes, but they're alive. On a special farm. Oh boy, they're on a farm. They're on a special happy farm where they make buttermilk. They romp and play. There's a hammock made of dreams. Wow. This truly was a Batman parody with a voice all its own. I, I mean a comedic voice, not, not the Christian Bale voice. You know what I mean.